So that was the story, taking an old one, a second old one, making one car from that, and then you started to learn more and more about the Tesla. How easy was it? Was there enough documentation? Did you get help from Tesla? There was no documentation at all. Like at that time, a few years ago, uh, people weren't really doing it. I Google searched, hey, how do I fix my car? And nothing came up. So I had to figure out it for my own uh, with help some from friends. And I actually had a friend that worked at Tesla. I'd asked him a few questions here and there, but he cut me off after a while because you can't share secrets among other people. Yeah. The secrets. And there's the repair act, right? I mean, you should be able to get access to that information. Right. And all the manufacturers, nobody likes it, but they have to do it. How is Tesla doing that? Uh, Tesla's funny because in, in Massachusetts, where I live, uh, there's a right to repair act, okay? And it requires that all dealerships must provide the tools to regular people to service and repair their cars. The way Tesla kind of circumvents that is that they're not an actual dealer, so they're not really obligated to do those things. Well, well, well I wonder if that holds out in court, but that's at least the statement they have. Now, so you built this channel, and more and more people got enthusiastic. When did it become more than a hobby project? I think it, that came about like last year or so when people kept saying hey when are you going to fix my car when are you going to fix my car there's a legitimate problem within Tesla that they don't have the time or resources to fix these new thousands of Model 3s are on the road. How bad is it? So I mean <laughs> I mean, I think for a lot of the wait time people have to get Model 3 delivered right off the delivery truck might be some panel gap issues issues don't work with the with, with the actual MCU and computer itself what they'll do is they'll be like a two or three week wait in some cases, sometimes a month, to get these issues resolved. So what they do... If you have a car which you want repaired, I hear in Boston there's 15,000 Teslas and two service uh, centers. Exactly. So the, there's a, the ratio between the amount of cars in the road, they're just pumping out over and over again to service centers is drastic. So when you have only two service centers in one concentrated area of the state, but you have like, you know, half a million cars running around, it makes it a lot more difficult. That's what we did. So I decided, you know what, I'll leave my full-time job. Start which one? Uh, I actually worked in IT, so I was an IT manager. So uh, I said, you know what? an IT manager be so a talkative guy? Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I was meant to be an IT manager. I think I'm meant to be someone up from the public figure or something. Uh, so that's what we did. We started a garage, actually services and repaired the vehicles. And uh, two guys who were used to work at BMW and Tesla. Yeah, so actually they actually both worked at Tesla. So they were part of the uh, the 9%. You know, after a while, uh, Tesla was cutting back on resources here and there. And uh, they're two of the guys that came from that. Yeah. They're really good. They work really hard, and they and then if you want to grow up, you want to have a garage. Yeah, you know, <laughs> no, they're, they're they're absolutely phenomenal. They actually helped make the business what it is today. So uh, I mean, with their knowledge of working at Tesla for all those years, it's super helpful. Yeah. And what is the relationship between you with your channel and and them with their garage? How do you guys work together? Is it one business? Is it the channel and the garage are the same? Uh, so so the channel and the garage are two separate entities. So I'm more of kind of like the Elon Musk of the electrified garage. So I drive traffic and content and awareness to the garage, and uh, they benefit from that that way. I mean, you have like way too many people <laughs> to, to drive t traffic right. to. Where are you? You are in? So we're, we're based out of uh, New Hampshire. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure. I mean, and, and we in Holland are watching your channel and in England are watching your yeah. channel. So it's way too much. What else, What other things do you do with your channel? Do you get advertisement out of it? Or are you a speaker now? Or do you basically teach people how to set up garages all I, over the world? I did, I did my first speaking gig and I think they pay me about like $14 or so. It was a it was so like so no, I, 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 I'm still trying to grasp around that concept. I only left my job a matter of months ago. So now I have to figure out how do I drive revenue? How do I make money? How do I do speaking events? But speaking engagements, haven't really done one yet. Yeah. So if we basically pay your ticket and we pay you some money to go to Amsterdam and basically talk to everybody who wants to be an independent repairman for Tesla, you have some interesting things to say. Yeah, of course. I got plenty to say. I could talk for hours. So, so yeah, I think it'd be kind of cool. Okay. Like, so then uh, what have you discovered about Tesla? So, uh, how easy are they to repair? How easy, how good are the cars made? Uh, what is the difference between the S, the X, the, the Freeze? Uh, tell me a little bit about it. Uh, just really quick, uh, I think uh, out of all the, the Tesla vehicles, I would say uh, the most reliable one so far is the Model 3. I think the Model 3, they've learned a ton from the Model S and X. Uh, the Model X is probably not as reliable as it should be with those. <laughs> yeah, with, with, with those fancy Falcon doors. I mean, uh, we could talk about it because we get. No, 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 the vibration, the vibration uh, of the. Uh, uh, oh, it's it, it, right, the drive shaft. Yeah, so a lot of vibration, a lot of things like that, but I honestly, the 3 is a solid one. If I, anyone's going to get a Tesla, I would recommend a Model 3 uh, uh, bar. It's really the best.
Yeah, so the, the Model X, uh, I'd probably sway people away from that. Is but it getting better? Do you see that every generation gets better? Absolutely. Every generation of Model 3 is getting better. And then the, the second iteration of the Model 3, which is the Model Y that's coming out shortly, I think that's going to be even better car, for sure. Now, there's two things I want to ask you so independently. I have my EMCC problem. Yep. So my chip fails after 100,000 kilometers, 100,000, yeah, 125,000 kilometers, 70,000 miles, yep. and three years. My Model X, a whole MCC failed, and I had to pay like three thousand euros to repair because a little chip was right. uh, fixed. Right. Why is that fi chip failing? Basically what they're doing is uh, Tesla doesn't really know how, to, well they know how to do it but they're not correctly writing to the chip or they're writing to the chip over and over again and filling up the memory. So there was an issue not that long ago where when certain uh, parameters were met when the mileage would get cer certain high or a certain uh, mileage and then the um, the, the mileage figures would go up and there were just far too many numbers on the screen, basically, in terms of mileage limits. Uh, more and more data would be written to that SD card itself. The car would just get confused, run more and more sluggish. So pretty much Tesla. And then it, became, and then it turns black. And it turns and that, black. Yeah. So you have a lot of those uh, coming to your shop? So that's a lot of the customers that we actually get in today. And uh, I'm actually one of those. Not only am I a representative, I'm also a client of it as well. So I have an older car, a 2012 uh, uh, Model S, and I'm starting to see a lot of those issues on mine as well. Yeah. Read to chip, because you need to read the chip because there's two little certificates uh, about that. So how do you think that Tesla is basically handling service? I think, well, overall, I think they're doing their best given the resources they have. Uh, they don't really have many resources considering how many cars they got in the road. So I think uh, Elon's main goal was to actually get as many Model 3s and other Teslas into the hands of people. But unfortunately, the service aspect infrastructure wasn't really built out as fast as the cars are being pumped out. Yeah. Okay, so you think they're doing the best, but it's not good enough. They need more resources, they need more people, they need more repair, and they need to open up to guys like you. Yeah, they absolutely do, because there's a lot of people that are interested in the technology, and a lot of others that are actually scared of the technology as well. Like, so for example, we had a, uh, oh. <laughs> We had a, a person that had a, uh, a Tesla that brought their car to a kind of a standard automotive repair shop. And they said, we've never worked on one before. We are not comfortable working on this. Please take your business elsewhere. And that kind of education is what we want to spread with people to say, you can work on these cars. Don't be scared because there's going to be half a million more of these coming on the line. So you better learn. Where are you in five years? In five years, we're going to have 10 locations. Ah, he's way too modest. <laughs> he will have a, I think you'll have a uh, electrified um, garage university yeah. and you have have about 10,000 people being trained all the time, paying $250. Okay. You have a great digital business driving traffic. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You have a great day. Thank you. Okay, so I got him on interview. You asked for it. Here he is. Richie is, uh, and maybe he's coming to Amsterdam.